what we're going to do is look at the composite converter nodes. So we're going to switch our window, our model window, to be the node editor and use composite nodes. And our starter noodle comes up for us. And this is the last time that I'll, I'll go through that. And we'll just switch over to using now the nodes layout that we, we laid out before. To illustrate the power of the composite converter nodes, let's go ahead and work with an image that's been blown up. And there's two things that I want to show you when you're working with the composite converter nodes. We won't need the render layer, so we can X that out. So let's work with an image that I've given to you on the DVD, and it is called the Panama Canal in the high def directory. So we do a space, add the image input node, go ahead and load new. Then in your blend directory, under textures and images for high def, Panama Canal HD.jpg. So let's go ahead and space converter separate YCBCR. CB stands for chromians in the blue, CR is chromians in the red. And that's a very long menu. So when you're going to add these, you want to start with your cursor way up at the top of your display because by the time you scroll all the way down to converter and all the way down to combine, the thing is like almost off your screen. So we grab it and move it up here and then thread it down. So when we do a render, I clicked on the do composite, the render comes out just great. So let's play with these channels. So what we're going to do, remember the color ramp node, go ahead and create three color ramps and insert them in here. So space, add, converter color ramp, there's one, and thread the Y's to the Y's. Now that we've used our inputs, we can just go ahead and click the plus sign there, and that collapses this babe to give us a little more room. Shift D to duplicate, hook up the blue chromians, Shift D to duplicate the um, red chromians. And now we have the exact same image run through the color ramps. All right. Now we can look at each channel individually, and each channel is really just a black and white image that provides a map to this combine YCBCR node. It's actually a very complicated math thing that's going on to separate out the channels and, and to recombine them. You can look that up um, on the internet to see the actual television formula that's, that's used. In any respect, um, this CBCR reflects better how phosphors and LCD TVs actually produce the color so that the signal that's transmitted is a lot more efficient and a lot more um, resistant to errors, I guess, in transmission. And that's why we've come up with this new, new standard, if you will, particularly for high def. All right, so if we click on the viewer node and press Shift D to duplicate that node and thread the output of the luminance channel, the Y channel, we now get the black and white image of this color picture. And if we drag around in here and if we look at this picture, we can see that it doesn't use the full dynamic range of blacks and whites. So it's kind of what we would call a dull picture. If we want to make it a little more brilliant, we can come down and look for the blackest areas of the image, like right in here, and we see that the RGB values are down in around 50s. So that means there are no values between 0 and 50 in this picture. So in other words, the blacks really don't get very black. And so in order to or compress that contrast, we can slide the bottom black slider up in the luminance channel, and that makes now the blacks much blacker, twice as black as a matter of fact. And then we can do the same for the whites. If we uh, scroll up, we can drag over this white house, and we can see that we have uh, 230. So if we can crank that up to like 240, then the whites will be a little whiter. So really we're increasing the brilliance, if you will, by compressing both ends of the scale. We are increasing the brilliance of the image overall. So now if we compare the original image, you can see how it looks washed out. The new one, you can see the blacks are blacker, the whites are whiter. I mean, everything is crisper and clearer. And of course, to make it even really pop out, on the luminance channel, 
you can click the exponential and now it's like almost overdone. For a more natural lighting effect we want to go back to the linear interpolation because that's the way the node splits it out and interprets it, the math formula for converting from YCBCR from RGB is in fact a linear math formula so we want to stick with the linear so otherwise we get color distortion we really don't want that for this particular case what we do want is I happen to know this image was actually shot originally as a 320 by 240 so now as a high def image if we zoom in on an area we can see that we start to get some pixelation or some very hard gradients across pixels right here I'm switching back and forth between the 960 and the, and the 961 pixel and if we really zoom in on that, and I'm going to shift, middle mouse button, drag, and that pans my view in the UV image editor, you can see these gradients here. And that's not good because the eye can pick that up. So what we can do to help this image a little bit is to blur this and make this gradient a little smoother across these five pixels to go from pu almost pure black to this middle gray to smooth this transition out, we can blur the luminance channel. Space, add, and introduce the blur filter. The blur filter is a really, really cool invention. I'm going to thread now the output of the luminance channel and then it's kind of insert it in the middle. So I'm going to cut that thread and insert the blurred luminance channel into the noodle. Now, the blur is set for zero, so it's not actually blurring anything, so the image hasn't changed. The difference between these two is a result of the compression that we've done. So now we're going from very black to very gray, and you can see this gradient change. Not good. The blur node takes, based on a formula, takes the surrounding pixels and kind of averages them out. There are a couple different formulas. One is the flat, which is just a linear interpretation between the different adjacent pixels. There is a tent, and a quad, and a cubic, and a Gaussian, and a catrom, and a Mitch kind of filters. I'm going to use the tent filter, because the tent filter gives you more of a drop-off kind. So let's go ahead now, and, and you can control how big the sphere of influence is. We can shift-click into the X field and pride 5 and press tab and that tabs us into the Y field press 5 again and now we see that this blur node has blurred these pixels and smoothed out the image and now that little highlight I guess on the water where the water spouts coming out is much smoother and not nearly as grainy as it would have been without the blur this concept becomes very important and we'll reintroduce this back later on when we're talking about working with 411 DV video because of the compression that's used in the DV format you have to really blur some channels in order to get a nice smoother result so this shows a trick for blowing up when you're blowing up film you don't need to worry about this because film is essentially resolution has an infinite resolution when you're blowing up digital images, you have to blur the luminance channel in order to get any kind of an acceptable result.